I brought three projects to show you, and uh, as a way to start, uh, I would like to start by showing this one. It's a way to to uh, tell a little bit where I came from, and so this is uh, São Paulo city. Is uh, where where I, I I I went by the first time to start the architecture school. Uh, and is the place where I live and work. Uh, and uh, I'd like to add, this is a city uh, from uh, which I learned a lot. You know, I, I learn and I keep learning a lot. So, so I consider, uh, in my experience, a great privilege to live in, in the city. So this is... Uh, this picture is showing uh, Ibirapuera Park, is a park, uh, important park in the city that was designed by uh, Oscar Niemeyer and Burle Marx. So the, la the landscape designer Roberto Burle Marx and the architect o Oscar Niemeyer. This park was inaugurated in 54. Uh, to celebrate the 400 years anniversary of São Paulo city. And it's a part with uh, uh, a program. So there are some buildings inside and a program. So what I, I'm going to show you is not exactly a project, but uh, in November of 2013, uh, we had an exhibition, uh, an art exhibition in this museum, and the curator, uh, she invited, uh, uh, besides, of course, the artists, she invited, like, uh, a group, of, a small group of architects, I think that six of us, to answer a question that, or to, to mention something about this question, you know? Uh, and the question was uh, if the Ibirapuera Park, uh, uh, that there is a museum inside. This museum is the Modern Art Museum of São Paulo. It's a museum that uh, was uh, found uh, pretty much at the same time of this park, a little bit before, but if we think uh, that the park was a project that started a little some years uh, before the inauguration, so both things uh, came more or less at the same time to the city. And the museum was found in downtown, in Sao Paulo, uh, where it stayed for about 10 years, and then uh, it started to live in a crisis that ended up uh, selling the whole collection to a different museum. So it's a very Brazilian stuff. The Modern Art Museum donate or sold the collection to a contemporary art museum. So nowadays, the contemporary art museum in Sao Paulo owns the most important modern art collection. And the, the, the museum came up again in the 60s. And, uh, and it is the museum who has uh, the important contemporary art collection. So, but <coughs> the museum is nowadays placed underneath this roof at this position, more or less, in a temporary pavilion that was uh, built by Lina Bobard inside this, uh, this uh, canopy designed by Nehemiah to host an exhibition, if I'm not wrong, in 59. And uh, it was an exhibition about Bahia, called Bahia. Uh, but uh, when the exhibition uh, w was finished, the, the construction remains. And it was used for a couple of years as a storage for the Brazilian Biennale. And uh, uh, this building played an important role when the Modern Art Museum came up again uh, in sixth and something. So because it hosts 
the first exhibition called Panorama. And Panorama was the exhibition that happened at the time when we were invited to comment about if this museum should or not stay inside the park. So, and for us, it was, uh, it's not a project to be built. It's just to comment some stuff and to present you a little bit of my town. So, but this is uh, a museum. I would say with the architects, they know by heart all the, the so this is a building where we, uh, it used to host the Biennale of Sao Paulo. It's 250 meters long and 50 meters wide. This is 150 meters long build by 35. This is exactly the same. This is a, a exhibition space with a diameter of 70 meters. The distance in between here and there is 750. So <clears throat> to give you an idea, so and it, it is pretty free. Uh, all the, 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 it seems no pretty free, but is something that is very peculiar in Nehemiah work. No, he, he talked about the curve a lot. And, and to me, really, the most important construction and invention by Neymar in this project is this canopy, the, the, the slab that uh, shade a, a huge part of the park and in a way with link different buildings. That there is this piece in here. And, and <clears throat> but actually there is a geometry, very rigorous. Uh, that uh, uh, guide the, the position of this building. And this is uh, what I, I thought that could be very interesting. You know, the, if I think about the distance between here and there, 750 meters, so, or if I, sorry about mention a lot of numbers, but in this case, I think that's important. So the, the, the area inside this building is 30, 5,000 square meters. So, <clears throat> and what we thought is, uh, is this. So if I isolate the buildings inside that park, is more or less this uh, figure is showed in here. And if I imagine a perfect square uh, with uh, 750 meters in each side, uh, it would embrace the whole thing. So, the, and, and this square nowadays would be inside and at outside of the park at the same time. So it, uh, the, this is, uh, is, is nice to answer the question that was made, if the museum should be inside or outside. So, <clears throat> but this, the total length of this figure is three kilometers. So if I imagine that there is a kind of uh, Corridoi Vasariani, for instance, you know, the, to, to place some artworks, uh, and if I imagine as uh, an arcade with 10 meters wide, 10 meters high, it would in, uh, have an area that is 30,000 square meters. So that is a little bit less than the building where we have the Biennale nowadays. So, and that was the way that we start to talk about this possibility. So it's uh, just some collage, the, the, the picture of Ibirapuera Park, for instance, this street here, uh, the airport is to that side. And uh, everyone that comes from Rio de Janeiro, for instance, they arrive in the city through this road. So it means 100,000 people every day that would cross underneath the museum twice. So we could choose uh, where you are going to displace the piece. So I could show to all the people driving a car underneath this piece of the museum uh, a, 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 a chosen uh, piece of art. Uh, <clears throat> the, the section that we imagined to, to build this, of course it was not a real project, but we I think that there is no way to think if not in a real way, you know. Uh, uh, we thought that four bars, 750 meters each, but how we are going to build? By building uh, uh, 10 columns in each, so the distance in between columns, the span would be 75 meters, 
and uh, which is a distance very convenient to so egress staircase. So it's a, the, the, the perfect measure for to display the egress staircase. So each one of the columns would uh, have a, a staircase inside. Uh, the, the span would be faced by a truss made in steel uh, in such a way that we had like four construction sites if I take each one as one bar or if I take each bar as ten columns I could have simultaneously 40 uh, construction sites because each column could be one. I could make the, the truss in the whole country and then bring this. So this is a building that could be built very quickly. Uh, and uh, it's nice because when we start to display the columns and of course the way that we choose the span and everything was to, to, to make it in a way that each road, each tree could be preserved in this prose. This is the model that we we put, uh, we, we show that the exhibition and some collages as well. All these images, the collage were made by Ciro Miguel, a great architect that worked with me for 10 years. Now he's living in Zurich. And well, but the, the, what was very attractive is uh, how a project could give us the opportunity to talk uh, about others, no? Or uh, it was also attractive, the, the idea to imagine a project that could be very simple as this, as construction, as an idea, but at the same time in a, a museum that could not exist in any other part of the world. I mean, how to have, uh, uh, could be special, a museum uh, would have, in, in, would has in, in his permanent collection, the buildings by Oscar Neymar and the gardens by Burle Marx. So this kind of stuff for us uh, uh, was very attractive to think about. So if the bar would cross a place with a lot of trees, we could just suppress part of the ground and to make it as a, a kind of veranda, an outside piece uh, of the museum but always elevated. Of course, we thought that when we are inside the park, the ground floor would be, in a way, transparent. So the people uh, 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 walking in the park, running in the park, they would be able to see some of the museum inside. So three kilometers, we, uh, 10 meters high, we thought about to have like a small trend going elevated that could cross the whole thing in 10 minutes, but also could stop in front of some of the art piece and to have like a, a exhibition, uh, very uh, special one, let's say. So, and uh, one more thing that sounds for us very attractive was the possibility of uh, have this, uh, it's a piece of architecture, it's a building, a museum, but with uh, perception, uh, I thought it was much closer to the idea of a city than a building, no? because it's a kind of building that could never be uh, taken uh, as a whole in one, single glance. You have to walk, you have to drive, you have to uh, to realize that this is a whole thing. So the form is uh, uh, it's a, a square, a perfect square, but uh, it's not possible to to realize that very easily when you look from just just one single piece. So the way that we were going to uh, build uh, the perception of the whole uh, was very attractive to me. So I, I, I said three projects. Uh, this is just uh, like to start by showing a little bit where I'm from. But uh, 
And this second one is uh, to share with you an experience, you know, to build something very close to here, not in Italy, but uh, Ticino, that is that place you know, where you brought the stones to the Duomo, <laughs> for instance. Uh, but uh, in 2008, we start to design a a project uh, here, it's a, a small apartment building in Lugano. Actually, the place is, is here, uh, which is uh, very close to the Monte Bre, actually at the bottom of the Monte Bre. It's a historical street placed exactly at the bottom of the Monte Bre. It's called Via Pico. And one uh, feature of the, the site was that uh, it was a spot which has uh, two different streets, so it, we could cross through. And <coughs> we, 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 we tried and we did you know the ground level pretty much uh, as a free level in a way that we could cross from one street to other. This is a very often path and it became a, a path that is used by the community. And in the ground level, which is showed in this image, we just have one, one small office, is a, a structural engineer office that belongs to the same people who invite me to design this project. And this is uh, <coughs> the plan of one of the apartments. So in this plan, uh, it showed the uh, small apartments uh, where we have one floor divided in two small apartments. Uh, and here, the, the exactly the same uh, slab, but with one single apartment that has like two cores. So in this side, is, uh, we have three rooms that uh, is more the space to the children, and then here, one more bedroom, so it's a house that has its meeting point here in the middle. Uh, just one thing that I'd like to highlight in this image is that you see here the bathroom is showed by one single line, is because we actually built like that. No, the, the, the bathroom was made by just one uh, panel of glass. So the, this wall is one centimeter thick. So the material are always, okay, the, the rooftop is a common garden. And okay. Well, I brought this model just to say it was made by Francisco Trivino, a model maker from Spain, living in Sao Paulo almost his whole life. And to me it's very special because this guy is now 91 years old. So he, he, he gave, uh, this model was produced like two years ago or three years ago. He's still working, he had just uh, finished a model for us. Uh, last month, and uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I really love to work with him. I, I, he's the, the same model maker who produced uh, the most uh, attractive models for Brasilia competition, for instance, <laughs> the Hino Levy project. Okay, so this is just to mention Francisco Trivinho and the building that we did. Is, uh, well, of course, that as a Brazilian to work in Switzerland, in the beginning I was very worried about uh, all the restrictions, the, uh, uh, the rules, the laws, the, uh, <coughs> all the uh, norms we had to follow to build the building. We, we were able to do that. But wh what I, I would like to mention you know, is my peers in Brazil, they also, but it's not so hard to deal with all those rules that we have to build in Switzerland. 
And in a way it is, but in other way is much clearer. So, and then uh, to me it's very funny when I show this project in Brazil, I like to say that here we were able to do everything that we are not allowed to do in Brazil. And uh, there are a lot of features in this building that are not allowed in Brazil. So it's in, uh, for instance, so I could never do a wall in this high, uh, like six stories in, in wood. This is not allowed. Uh, I could never do the egress staircase outside. I, I, I couldn't uh, do the common uh, rooftop, I mean, as a garden to everyone. Uh, I, I, it's not allowed in Brazil to have the glass from the, the, uh, the whole high, from the floor to the ceiling. So, a lot of stuffs that are not allowed. But maybe, uh, and I couldn't do this open ground level as well. It's not because all the previous one is because it's not allowed uh, to by the, 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 the rules. But the, the first one, maybe to the, the social issue that because uh, no, it's a point. Uh, and it's very curious because uh, we were taken uh, at least by our uh, colleagues, architects in Switzerland, as from a place which developed a lot of uh, this idea of piloti in a peculiar way, I think that due to the climatic condition. And, uh, but what is true, no, I, I showed you the Nehemiah work, the canopy of Ibirapuera Park, that is something uh, that is remarkable. But although one hand we develop a little bit this language, we are not so much allowed to use due to other kind of problems. No, and, and here in Switzerland, we, we had a context that allowed us to apply some of these uh, ideas, no, like we did in here. So this is what I, I think that is the most special about the possibility of exchange uh, in between our different contexts. No, is because in some situation it makes possible what wouldn't be in one or other side, but just became possible because we are working together. Of course, I, I, I had some uh, people, Bazerga and Mosette were, were the architect from Locarno working with us in it. Andrea Pedrazzini, the structural engineer, and all the people very helpful. And But this was the building that we built. Uh, in general, we use the same, well, I, I like very much this picture because it reminds a lot Rio de Janeiro, Sugarloaf, and this kind of, it, it seems like a Brazilian <laughs> landscape. <coughs> but we, we designed this building by using pretty much the same, even the same materials. You no, know, all the walls in MDF is very, all the, the, the floors in terrazzo that I, uh, it's something that I like too much. We could design some furniture like this. Again, the Ibirapuera here uh, is the same park that I showed you in the, the beginning. <coughs> like this table or some, here you, see, you can see what I mentioned about the bathroom that is uh, are made by one single piece of glass. Uh, so this is one of the apartments that we design almost everything. And <coughs> so, and finally, a very small project uh, placed in Sao Paulo city that it is just like a, the most important thing in the program of this project is a swimming pool. Uh, <coughs> and this is a private swimming pool, but I, I, I feel this project has a very, uh, very linked to the city 
and uh, very public in a way as uh, in, in the way that it works. No, but of course it's a private property and a private pool. And to me this was very special as an experience because uh, it was a project very close to my office. It, I took very long to be able to build something in Sao Paulo, like, and uh, so this was not the first one, but as close as this, no, because, uh, uh, I, uh, excuse me the parentheses, but I mean, I was born in a very small town, uh, like uh, four kilometers far away from Sao Paulo. I went there by the first time to start the architecture school, and when I finished the school, uh, the first, uh, staffs that I had to design were in my town. Of course, my old friends invite me to do very small projects, not, not important at all. But I, I, I had a lot of time, I, I, I could. But I, I was working in Sao Paulo. I could not go to the construction site as often as I wish. So I think that since the beginning, I, 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 I learned a lot about to, to define the construction, the procedures far away from the construction site. I, uh, this, uh, so I was familiar about to send the drawings directly to the workers to, to d d develop some. In that time, no, we had no computer in our office. We work with the regular mail, those kind of drawings that we do by hand. And uh, so I, I think this was very helpful, for instance, when I, I was designing this project in Lugano or some other experience. But at the same time, when I had this project to be built so close to my office, I mean, this is like 10 minutes walking. I, I was enjoying a lot the possibility to go to the site uh, every day during the lunchtime. So. Of course, in the end of the process, I, I wish it could be far away, you know, because it was <laughs> very time consuming and <coughs> very much. But this is the site, or, or the site is placed in this neighborhood, uh, exactly in, in here. So you can see it's surrounded by high rise building but in the neighborhood that we built, there is no any one skyscraper. Uh, and of course, this is because it's not allowed by the law. There are some laws in Brazil. No? <laughs> it's a, a fun thing, but it is true. If I show some project, there's always that, uh, like if we were able to do anything, uh, like uh, so a lot of freedom, and what sometimes seems as a f a freedom, uh, it's also could be like precarious, just precarious. So, and if you show, <laughs> if I show some projects in this context, ah, but in Brazil, everything, you can do anything you want, so it's easy. And, and when a Brazilian see a project in Switzerland, ah, but uh, oh, that money is very easy to do what you want. So uh, we are, always escape of the real problem. I think it's a tendency, it's natural, no? And, and here, so no one is skyscraper in this neighborhood. They bought the site to build a swimming pool. This, this site belongs to a couple. They are like, no, not so young, let's say like that. <laughs> and and, and the, they are very tired about to travel, to leave Sao Paulo because it's crazy. You, you spend the whole week uh, jumping the traffic. Uh, and uh, it, during the weekend, you decide to go to the beach, and uh, the whole city, 20 million people, they have the same idea at the same time, it's amazing, and you are going to be at the traffic again on the road. So they, and they, they would like to have a place to stay in Sao Paulo. They bought this site, it's uh, 10 meters wide, 25 meters deep, long, to build a pool and a bedroom, almost that to stay. And they, they came and they brought this drawing. So she worked as a fashion consultant, she's familiar uh, with drawings, and, and he is a professor of philosophy at the University of Sao Paulo. So it's a very 
really nice to talk to them. And they had a very clear idea about what to build. So it's a swimming pool to exercise, to swim. Uh, here would be their bedroom. And they thought they would need a place for a housekeeper, uh, a place to park in the, the cars, the garden. And that's it. But they were worried because they would used to go to the site and they placed the pool according to their drawing on the ground and they realized well, that we have no skyscraper but the maximum height allowed is six meter what means uh, with no setbacks there is no setbacks uh, required but uh, you can reach an, uh, up to six meters so and the, the, the length of the site is uh, south-north. So you have this neighbor shading the site the whole morning, and if they place the pool at this side, they were worried about the sun, and they change to the other, the, uh, so the whole afternoon. So, and they, they brought the drawing, they made the, they brought also this question, Angelo, do you know, what do you think we should displace the pool to each side, this one, that one? And I, I said, no, that is, um, what's the decision to have sun more in the morning or more in the afternoon? But of course, that the period of sun they would have at the ground level would be the same. No way to escape. But I, I said, but I think it's a very good idea to displace the pool, but not to one side or other. Let's displace it up. And they asked, but how much? I said, six meters. And they, why? because that is the surface. If you are looking to the sunlight, the surface is defined by law, again, six meters above the ground level. Because so we always think about surface as the place we are walking, you know, but it depends what we are talking about. If I talk about water table, for instance, at this place, the water table is two meters below, two and a half meters below the ground level. If I think about the airplanes at this place, they are 800 meters above. So, and this is the position that we suggest to the pool. And this is the project uh, that we design, more or less. And when we look, uh, so here are the airplanes, I like that, but uh, let's just do. So if I show you the drawing that we did is pretty close to that one that they brought. And sometimes I, I like to think that, you know, that our goal is not just to, or it's not to have ideas. I, I don't think that architecture is uh, first about having uh, crazy ideas or amazing ideas. Uh, to me, is to know how to build stuff. So they, they, they had the idea, they, they had a very clear idea how, uh, what they would like to have, but they did, didn't know exactly how to build. And then <coughs> we made this proposal. So if you look at the plans, this is the ground level. The landscape designer uh, he is very happy because he told me he had twice the area of the site to to put the garden, so because the walls, the six meters wall are, are also gardens. Uh, so while in general uh, we have to find the maximum FAR in a site, here we were trying to find the opposite, you know, was the maximum uh, area of garden possible. And as we had the pool on the top, and of course, all the, mechanicals, uh, the mechanical space on the bottom, all the pumps on the bottom, to make the water uh, recirculated, we built some other small pools, uh, like to m make the water in the garden uh, mixed in this. Uh, so we have a small one here that drop the water to that lower one in here. And, and the main pool 
when we make it circulate the water drop fall uh, uh, down to this way and that way to the other pools and the whole system works as a uh, one single like one single pool displayed also vertically you know as the garden also works so it is like this uh, the water pour at this point and that point to here and here to here uh, and, and through the staircase to this point and from this place where we have the pumps it recirculate all up of course there are a lot of choice you can uh, make just one if you, the, the water is being hit in uh, we suppress the falling the models or one model two pictures of one model in the pool <laughs> It. So it is a project made by some pieces. No, is 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 hard to define what is exactly inside or outside. Outside, what one thing starts or finished. Uh, I, I like to think that uh, it's not so. Um, one thing that I uh, it's very nice to me is the fact that each level is, uh, has a different mood. When you you get inside the site in the ground level, of course you you are inside this 10 meters high, 25 meters long place defined by six meter high walls. Uh, but when you get the, the the rooftop where the the main pool is placed, it, it, the, your limits change it completely. And. <clears throat> So of course that in Brazil uh, we we never heard about thermal bridges. It does not exist in Brazil, uh, and it, it makes sense to me because uh, as we never don't have uh, below zero, there is no condensation. There is no freezing and. So it changed everything. It you uh, can discuss if it's more or less comfortable, but it's not a mandatory issue. You no, know, like in here. <coughs> and this, uh, of course, uh, although this is a place, it, it's very small as a construction, and there are some things that I really like. For instance, their apartment is thirty square meters and the housekeeper apartment is 30 square meters so this in the social like feature in Brazil is not so common it's w maybe the only construction the whole street that you can look in, uh, through the uh, from the street and uh, we have a lot of gardens underneath the pool and the the apartments and the deck on the top the sun deck on the top but uh, of course we have this kind of uh, uh, it's a tropical climb and a lot of trees that can uh, grows partially shaded but we also thought about two, these two main pieces as a kind of uh, giant pergola or something like that, no? And uh, they are in a position which is uh, very convenient to do that. For I if you realize that the wall, this, si this wall side of the pool is inclined and it's inclined to allow the sun uh, come down to the to to light the garden so in a way that the whole ground level is hit by the sun in in some point of the day you know like uh, and then that, that's of course is the reason why we designed this staircase in this way very transparent like this and and the, here you see the airplane can you see the airplane here <laughs> That's I, I really like that because I think it's highlight the, the metropolitan condition of the site. Although it looks like an oasis in a way, you go there uh, just to to spend time. But it is very linked to uh, metropolitan dimension of the city, and uh, this is the approaching of the airplane to the local airport. So it about each five minutes an airplane arriving. 
from Rio and exactly uh, on this uh, route. And, and here I, I hope you can imagine what I said, that when you reach the top level, the place is uh, it's different. It's a different landscape. Uh, the, the boundaries disappear, or the, the, those first boundaries disappear, and you have you can here see the, the skyscraper and those stuff. No. The structural engineer that we work in this project, of course, is uh, an amazing person and a very skilled uh, engineer. And uh, we could do stuff. Uh, the, 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 the swimming pool is uh, counterweight to the, the other part, the, the apartments. And so here you can see that we could even uh, detach totally the, the, uh, the column and the beam uh, in this, and uh, that's why we made the, 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 this kind of to highlight it in the glass, no, to keep it. That's it. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.